Hey everyone, welcome back to the Goff House. If you've been here before, if you're new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. I'm Jenny and today I have a couple different little appetizer recipes I'm gonna show you. Um, some of my favorites that I like to serve around the holidays. Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna make baked olives first and these kind of can double as a cheese puff. It's the same cheese puff dough that I'm using for the baked olives as I'm gonna do some plain. So, I've got a quarter cup of butter in here. This butter is salted. If you prefer to use unsalted, you can use unsalted. I have one half a cup of flour going in. I'm gonna add my seasonings right to this. I'm gonna put like a quarter teaspoon of salt in there, a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of mustard powder, and a good pinch of paprika. Okay, that is all for the seasonings. And I need one cup of shredded cheddar. Now you don't wanna use the, um, the pre-shredded stuff at the store. It just doesn't work very well. It doesn't mix in very well. And I will tell you what, I'm using cheddar today, but you can use any flavor of cheese you like. Um, I do these sometimes with smoked Gouda. Um, I've done them with Swiss. I've done them with um, all kinds of cheese. So I'm gonna put my cup of cheddar in also. There we go. That's just a little extra, I think. You can do this in the food processor if you prefer. I'm just gonna work it in with my hands into a dough. But if you grate the cheese when it's cold, I stick it in the freezer for 15 minutes, then you can grate it. Then you can let it sit on a plate after it's been grated um, to come to room temperature and then it's easy to mix in. Next thing you're gonna do, your choice of olives, whatever kind you like. These are just regular pimento stuffed olives. But if you wanna do some garlic stuffed olives, blue cheese stuffed olives, whatever kind of olive you like, a black olive, um, you're just gonna wanna take a piece of dough probably a rounded teaspoon, unless you have a bigger olive. Put your olive in the middle. And roll it up. Okay, I'm gonna get this on my cookie sheet. I've just got a piece of parchment on there. I've got my oven preheated to 400 degrees. Now these do not have any leavening in them and they will not spread, or they're not gonna puff up and spread, so you don't have to be super careful about how close together you're putting them. At least a half inch apart. And then you can make some plain if you want. I'm gonna do half of this plain. Because not everybody likes olives. But you know, if you wanted to put a nut in the middle of this, like a walnut or a pecan, you could do that too, that would be good. My kids love these growing up. Um, their favorite is when I do this plain like this with smoked Gouda. Okay, here are all my rolled balls. I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the 400 degree oven for about 10 minutes. Um, it's 10 to 12 minutes. These usually take about 10 minutes for me. Um, the one with olives, I put a little extra cheese so I would know which one was which. Okay, the cheese puffs are done, and I have cut one in half with the olive. Delicious! The next thing we're gonna make is chicken spread. Super easy, super quick, delicious. In this bowl, I'm gonna put eight ounces of cream cheese. So one brick. I am also gonna put one can of white meat chicken spread. These are usually over by the tuna. Okay, I have to tell you a story. I had, when I got married, I catered my entire wedding and this is so good, I used it in my finger sandwiches. <laughs> I'm gonna put a few dashes of Worcestershire. I'm gonna put some black pepper. You're probably gonna want like a half a teaspoon. And then, um, dried minced onion. 
Let's see, that's a tablespoon, um, probably a tablespoon and a half. A little bit of bottled lemon juice and a tablespoon of soy sauce. Sounds weird, but it's so good. I'm gonna give my bowl a scrape down and taste it because it might need just a smidge more Worcestershire. I'm gonna put one extra little squirt and that'll be good. Oh my gosh, that's so good. So it ends up being more like a tablespoon of Worcestershire and a tablespoon of soy. Throw in a teaspoon of dried parsley. And there is our chicken dip. Super delicious. I'm gonna refrigerate this for two hours and I've already put it in a serving dish. So I'm just gonna cover it, refrigerate it. It'll be ready. Next thing I'm gonna be making are my mince meatballs. I'm just doing a small batch for us tonight but you can definitely make a larger batch. This is a half pound of ground beef. One egg. I'm gonna put some black pepper in here. And a little bit of Himalayan pink salt. I'm gonna keep these kind of plain because the flavor is in the sauce. So I've got French fried onions. Instead of breadcrumbs, I'm going to be using these. So I've got a half pound of ground beef and I'm probably going to be using maybe a quarter to a half a cup of the french fried onions. And get this stirred up together. Again, not a lot going in here because the flavor is in the sauce. If you over flavor your meat and then over flavor your sauce, everything kind of gets lost. Okay, I'm gonna get my pan hot. You're gonna want a nice light oil for this not an oil with flavor, so no olive oil. And I've got this on a medium high. I wanna give these a good sear. Again, if you're having a lot of company, you're gonna to wanna to make more of these. And you can make these and not put them in a frying pan. You could do them right in a baking dish, like a nine by 13. Um, bake them off and then at the last minute, toss them in a crock pot to keep them warm. Uh, make the sauce in, in the crock pot or make the sauce heated up and then dump that in the crock pot first and then put your cooked meatballs in it um, to keep it on warm or chafing dish, um, whatever is easiest for you. I tend to always pop them in a crock pot. Also, another tip, you can use um, a pound of beef and a half a pound of ground pork or you could do sausage. Um, I wouldn't do Italian sausage, but like a breakfast sausage would be good. Okay, the meatballs were mostly done, so I have pulled them out. I have got a half a cup of mold cider going in. I'm going to put a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. This is my mincemeat jam. I have a video on this. I'll link it in the description box below if you didn't see it, but I made this yesterday. It is so good. And I am going to put, oh, a heavy quarter cup in there. If you wanted this sweeter after you got done, you could definitely add more sugar, but this jam's pretty sweet. And I am going to go ahead and add my meatballs right back in. Get them covered with this sauce. I'm just gonna let them simmer in this sauce until they're cooked the rest of the way through. So 10 minutes or so, they're pretty cooked. So I'm gonna put this 
on just a medium heat. I'm gonna go ahead and cover them and let them simmer for about 10 minutes. I have turned my meatballs off and they have simmered in the sauce with the raisins and the apple. Oh my goodness, so good. All right, I am gonna taste test my meatball. Super delicious, it's moist, oh my gosh. Hot too, by the way. That is so good. If you've made this jam, you're gonna wanna make these meatballs. And then my cheddar cheese pup with the olive. That's always good. <laughs> the last appetizer I have for you is a simple deviled egg. I am going to show you my very favorite deviled eggs. And these are egg salad deviled eggs. I've got a little bit of onion here. I'm just doing a small amount. Um, I'm going to make 12 deviled eggs. And I am pre-chopping a little bit of onion here. Okay, that's probably enough. I don't need a lot for six eggs. Um, I've got a little tiny chopper. I'm going to put it in here. This is how I prefer my eggs. And I make an array of different deviled eggs, and I love the wasabi deviled eggs too. Um, but I just really love this plain egg salad deviled egg. I have one dill pickle. And so one pickle for six eggs is enough. Um, if you're going to be doing more, you're going to want more. I have got six hard-boiled eggs here. Whoa. Slippery little suckers. Going to want the yolks right in. And I just did these right in my little um, egg cooker. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of salt in here. Put a little bit of black pepper. I'm putting a tiny bit of Dijon in there, probably a quarter teaspoon. And maybe a quarter cup of um, mayo. I know, it seems like a lot of mayo, but I like it creamy. Okay. If you've got a little food processor, you can use that. You could use a chopper. You could use a fork to crush everything up. Okay, if you use something like this, it's a workout. But look how creamy and nice. And I just wanna uh, make sure that there's enough salt and pepper in here. A little more salt. It's much easier to do it this way. You could drop it in by a spoonful if you want. You can also put a star tip in this bag, a big star tip, to make um, the deviled eggs a little more fancy. Hey, I'm just gonna cut the corner out. You can make these as pretty as you want. I am gonna do the classic paprika, just so it um, has a little bit of red in it, but you could put sprinkle fresh herbs on here, you could put a pimento on the top of each, whatever you like to do. But there is my classic egg salad deviled eggs. Okay, so that is all there is to my festive little appetizers. Um, these are just a few of my favorite things. These are super easy and delicious recipes. Hopefully you give them a try. Put your own spin on them. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. It really helps me out a lot and I sure do appreciate your support. If you haven't started following me on Instagram yet, you should. At JennyGoff18. I'm also on Facebook, and you can visit my blog for all of my recipes, including this one at JennyGoff.com. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.